And now, a public service announcement from the Ministry of Silly Tree Management. Stay tuned, we will return you to our regularly scheduled Patreon update video. Now, when landing a large grant into an open source pro 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 project, you have to be aware of the kind of collateral damage that it can create. You might think that these few features are excellent, but it can create a lot of damage to other people's carefully manicured gardens and lawns. So, it's worth bearing in mind that you need the right kind of tools to make sure that the kind of branches that you land are small enough that they don't cause extra extra work for your fellow contributors so if you are in the position where you are have exciting work to do make sure that you talk to your contributors first and they will help you chuck your contributions into the right kind of sizes before they land Hello everybody and welcome to another um, Patreon update video. Uh, this week is a bit uh, slim because of, uh, if you just watched the introduction, uh, we had a tree, basically the top of the tree fell off and landed in our garden. Fortunately, nobody was hurt and uh, there was very minimal damage, but it's meant that I've spent uh, quite a lot of this week uh, clearing, chopping, sorting branches um, so you'll have to have my apologies that I haven't been able to work on Inkscape full-time this week uh, but I do have some updates for you um, the first one is that the uh, website has been suffering from spammers um, this is because people can get through the login registration pr process confirm an email whether it's a bot or a hum human being and then once they have an account they can then uh, spam the website um, sometimes this is just a matter of spamming in terms of posting to the forums sometimes this is comments um, sometimes it's graphics and advertisements and links um, but as the website administrator i'm kind of responsible for for at least securing the website to a degree um, one ancillary issue that we have is that we, we, we're currently using the Google Recapture, uh, which is a, a are you a bot service. And this, uh, this is not good for two reasons. One is because it's letting spammers in, uh, but it's also not good for, for um, security, right? That, that thing is tracking you and uh, Firefox, in fact, blocks that by default. So this is something that I've been meaning to get rid of for a long time. Um, so I asked my friends at the Free Software Foundation, because they usually know various free software solutions, replacements, alternatives, and they had never come across a good uh, free software recapture alternative. So I've decided to develop one that's specifically aimed at Inkscape. Um, so in order to register on the website, uh, if the tests go right, you will have to attach an SVG document with required shapes in it. So what it will say is it will say, hey, create me a document with, you know, two blue cir cir circles in it. And then when you attach that, it'll say, yep, there you go. Now you, I, I know you're a human being and I know that you're, uh, you could read the instructions. And also, which is also important, I know that you are an Inkscape user and know how to use it. Um, the other reason that this is actually not bad is because we don't really want people registering for accounts who either don't uh, use Inkscape or they are trying to register for an account because they think registering for an account is what you do in order to get Inkscape. Um, because a lot of people are trained now to think of apps as just being web services when Inkscape is a traditional desktop application. Um, so I need to put in warnings and other various bits and bobs, and I need to think about how this affects the forums registration. Um, people who may not be able to get Inkscape to run, for, for instance, who want to be able to post the forums. 
Um, so I'm going to continue experiment and see if I can find a solution. Um, but it's a hard problem because recapture is not an easy thing to try and attempt. Um, but I think we need a solution anyway. And when I've finished it, I'll pass it on to the FSF anyway. I don't know if they can use it because it is kind of spe specialized to make Twinkscape, but either way, it'll be fun. Um, I added in an, an experimental user interface improvement. This is a list of uh, raster images to import, just like you can when you can open recent SVGs. This is a import recent raster images. So say if you take a screenshot or you uh, download a, an image from, from, from the internet uh, on Linux, I don't know what it will do on win Windows, but fingers crossed it's, it works the same way. It will be basically be a list of those files for each. You can just select them straight away and import them. Um, this was mo mostly for myself because I was importing screenshots a lot and like dragging uh, highlights around things to post to people to help them. Um, I did do some research on the on the zoom correction because GTK allows you to uh, detect the monitor that your application is on and it gives you some information about the sizing. But I found that the information is often not correct. And, you know, it's it's because monitors are not very good about telling the truth about how big they are because people use the same information for all of their screens, no matter what the size is. So there's a lot of misinformation out, out there. So I didn't think it was a reliable uh use of my time like if I, I i could do is it would make inkscape slightly better but it would be a lot of work for very little payoff considering how many people would be able to take take advantage of it um one of the things i did yesterday was i um was watching somebody on twitch uh walnut um she was basically using inkscape to uh trace over some some artwork and as well as providing some tips in the chat, uh, mostly what I was trying to do is I was trying to watch how people are using Inkscape and trying different tools. And uh, it became obvious that the power pen pencil, when you're trying to use a shape, uh, doesn't allow you to specify the width of the stroke, uh, which seems like a bit of a user experience problem. Um, fortunately, it was very easy to add that in, uh, and I have that in a, in a branch now so that we can, we can give that a try and see, make sure it doesn't disturb anything but I think it will be a positive improvement to basically creating those kinds of strokes for people who draw um, if you uh, use twitch or you use uh, you know some other streaming let me know I'd be interested to watch people draw every now and then in Inkscape to see how how they do it or where they get stuck um, once again thank you very much to all of my patreons thank you for everybody who helps support my Inkscape development um, my plan for the coming week is to finish off some of the work that I currently have going, and I want to make a start on the user interface for the um, on, on, onboarding screen. This is where you get to select the default paper sizes, default colors, default themes, and that sort of thing when you first start Inkscape. Um, this is mostly to help um, users who um, have never used Inkscape before, because we get the same questions over and over and over again about changing the settings. So fingers crossed. I can at least make a make a good effort start on that. And uh, th thank you very much for watching.